To the dismay of a few jealous, disappointed people, this video, and more importantly, this channel, is indeed sponsored by Ratchet Clothing. I'll put a link for their website down below in the description. Check them out. There are many ways in which a person can demonstrate who they truly are. And this goes for the street and in everyday life as well. But the greatest example is when a person says the following words, you don't know who I am. Words that I think it's safe to say we've all heard. In my opinion, if a person has to tell you who they are, they're extremely insecure with themselves. My friend Johnny Santori taught me never to speak about who I am or anything that I've done. His words were, if you clip a guy, only two people should know about it and one's dead. As far as somebody saying you don't know who I am, he said anytime a guy told me that, he got cracked just on principle. As for Cousin Nostra, any member of that life cannot utter those words. In fact, you could get yourself in a lot of trouble with those words. You're not permitted to say who you are, and words like that is exposing yourself. In general, 99% of the people who say those words are not members of that life. Although there have been guys in that life who've used those words or words similar. A few different times I've heard people say in front of civilians, he don't know who I am. It's the same thing. In fact, one time Joe Perna said in front of a woman, my whole town knows I'm a gangster. That town being Wyckoff, New Jersey. First, he's not supposed to say that, especially in front of a woman. And if you need to toot your own horn, become a musician, not a gangster. <laughs>
We ended the call with him saying, as humble as pie now, I'll be praying for your mother. I just got off with, okay, Anthony, we'll be talking soon. Here's an interesting fact. When I walked back into Bella Notte and sat down at the table, I explained what just took place. One of Patty De La Rosa's guys asked me, you don't think he's anybody, do you? I just smiled. After hearing the way the guy just talked on the phone, anyone from the street knows the guy's a bean shooter who just made serious mistakes. So this clueless person who asked me if I thought the guy was anybody is presently a Lucchese member. More important than that, he's the new face of organized crime. After dinner that night, I met up with a member of the Colombo family who filled me in on Anthony Tony Muscles Guadino. He was an associate with the West Side, not a friend like I quickly learned as soon as he opened his mouth. And at one time, he was married to Tommy Bellotti's niece. As most people know, Tommy Bellotti was the former Gambino underboss who was killed with Paul Castellano outside Spark Steakhouse. The guy I was speaking with that night was Ralphie DiMatteo, who at the time was a friend, but is currently the consigliere for the Colombo family. Ralphie did time with this Tony Muscles, and according to him, he had to put him in his place one day. In 2007, Tony Muscles caught another case, one that involved corruption in local aid, the Rufus Union, where he was a business agent. During that trial, a former girlfriend of his testified against him as to the beatings that he gave her. Ralphie didn't have one good thing to say about him. The next day, I received a call from none other than Johnny Cyprus. He asked if I would be in Staten Island later that night and said he needed to speak with me. When I got to Staten Island that night, I drove straight to Ernie Grillo's house. I told him the whole story, and when I finished, he called this Tony Muscles a brain-dead embarrassment. He told me I needed to make my point, but also to let Johnny LaRocca know I'm letting it go because of him. He said, you may need a favor for him one day, and now he owes you. After leaving Ernie, I drove to the cigar lounge. Big John was there, and I asked for sideburns. He told me sideburns was with his brother Bubsy in Zio Toto, which was a few doors down. I went to walk out of the cigar lounge, but Big John said, wait, I need to talk with you. He said, Johnny LaRocca was here this afternoon asking about you. Johnny LaRocca is a very low-key captain with the West Side, the Genovese family. He's the owner and partner in all the Campania restaurants. And he's also a partner in the restaurant Positano in Bay Ridge with another West Side captain, Ralphie Bassamo. And one of the Campanias is not too far from that restaurant. I've spoken with Johnny LaRocca a few times. One time was to thank him for getting Joe DiNapoli, a cardiologist. But we were never introduced, so he didn't know my status with the Lucchese family. So Big John said that Johnny LaRocca told him he wanted to speak to him about a guy who's around sideburns. Big John laughed and told him, John, he's not around us. He's a friend with my crew. He told me you had to see his face when I told him that. So Big John and I spoke about the call with Tony Muscles. John called him the cedar at Campania, meaning he was the guy who would see people in the restaurant. When I told him everything the guy said, he told me, make sure you go see Johnny LaRocca and embarrass them over this. When I walked into Zio Toto, I seen Cyburns talking with Bubsy at the bar. The first thing Cyburns said to me is, I have to bring you to Campania and introduce you to Johnny LaRocca. I was there this afternoon with him and that Anthony, you know, I know him a lot of years. He apologized to me. You know, he didn't know who you are. So we'll go over there, shake hands with the guy, and then we'll go. I was pissed. I told him, are you fucking kidding me? I'm not doing any of that. First of all, the only reason he's not getting cracked in the face is out of respect for Johnny LaRocca. So this guy, Tony, Tony Muscles, can't talk to me. I'm going to show him that I found out who he is, a nobody, and I'm going to treat him accordingly. Sideburns, who was formerly around the West Side and always bends for them, got upset by what I was saying. He told me, then I'm out of it. You're going to start a fucking war. I told him, stay out of it. I don't need anyone to speak for me. You do the introduction and you can leave. So Sideburns stormed out with a red face. I looked over at Bubsy, who had one eye on me and the other eye was pointing towards the bar. He said, you're right. Fuck sideburns. He's always kissing their asses. Typical Bubsy, bad mouthing the guy that he was just talking with. When I walked back into the cigar lounge, sideburns looked disappointed. What he didn't know was that Big John told me to go over there and embarrass them. So he must have went to Big John to complain about me and got nowhere. I could say a lot of things about Big John, but when he wanted to be spiteful with guys in that life, he loved it. And he wanted me to be spiteful with the West Side that night. Cyburns and I drove over to Campania. He said Johnny LaRocca was waiting for us in the McDonald's, which was in the same shopping center as the restaurant. When we pulled up, I seen Johnny LaRocca in McDonald's talking to somebody that I assumed to be Tony Muscles. But he came outside to greet us alone. Cyburns did the introductions and he went into McDonald's. I wanted him to leave, but he wanted to be nosy and stick around. The first thing Johnny LaRocca said is, I didn't know it was you. My son told me I knew you, but I couldn't figure out who you were. He said, I like to apologize about all of this. He's a cousin of mine and he's around us and he didn't know who you are. He thought you were with Cyburns. 
And we kind of both laughed. I was just listening at this point. He said a couple of other things about the woman I used to date, which I'm not going to get into. And after a while, I did speak. I said, John, you know, right from the start, I knew who I was dealing with. As a matter of fact, as soon as he told me that I didn't know who he was and that I should look him up, I knew he wasn't a friend. But what surprised me the most is when he mentioned your name and on the phone, no less. As I'm sure you know, by doing what he did, he exposed you and me. He put his hand on my shoulder and I seen the embarrassment on his face. He said, I know, I know. I spoke to him about that. He knows he's wrong. I said, okay, John, it's forgotten about out of respect for you. But then he asked me for a favor. He said, do me a favor, walk back in with me so he could shake your hand. Honestly, I didn't want to shake this guy's hand, but then I remember what Ernie told me. I said, okay, John, for you, I'll do it. He said, thank you. I appreciate it. We walked into McDonald's and Cy Burns had a shit eating grin on his face. Johnny LaRocca tells the guy, say hello to my friend, John. And he puts his hand out and I quickly shake it. I turned to Cy Burns and told him, you know, we got to go. But when we left, I only shook Johnny LaRocca's hand. By the time we got back to the cigar lounge, Johnny LaRocca already called Big John. And he told him, your friend's a true gentleman. Do you think that's the end of the story? It's not. Now I'm going to show you how the West Side operates. About a month or so later, this Tony Muscles gets arrested. They find money and some other things. And there's further allegations of domestic violence with another woman. I learn all this from Ernie Grillo, who tells me he was involved with the money that was confiscated. And Tony Muscles, you don't know who I am, gives up the person's name who the money belongs to. It's not Ernie, but it's somebody associated to him. So Ernie tells me he's no good. The very next day, I get a telephone call. And who wants to see me? The politician, Johnny Cyburns. I go meet him by his house in Howard Beach. And he tells me, oh, by the way, I was with Johnny LaRocca and he was asking for you. He sends his regards. He told me that Anthony is no good. And anything that you want to do to him is okay by them. Unbelievable. I told him, let me tell you something. If the West Side thinks they're going to use me to do their dirty work, they're mistaken. Let them handle their own problems. When that guy was disrespectful on the phone and talking out of his ass, they didn't want to do nothing. They wanted it to go away. So now let them handle it. He said, okay, I'm only telling you what the guy said. And I ended it with, and you told me. And that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please remember to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you could do that as well. If you think friends and family might enjoy this video, please share it and thank you. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day and I'll catch you on the next one. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you can do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.